Hi, Deb. Can you hear us? Hello, Deb. Hey, Debbie. Hey. Hiya. Uh, I don't know about Tony. I didn't hear from him. This was the criteria, which is actually um, yeah, it's, the, it's the same thing. Um, that's something different. Oh, this is a letter. That's the letter. Okay. Get comfortable, careful. Well, I was this chair. I moved. It, it went back further than that. Like um, I had standard yeah, when, when they go back like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> all the way back. Whoa. Oh. Uh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Thank you. Did I already get one of these for posterity? Yes, I did. Okay. And then I believe this for Keith. No one ever returned that. It was just um, some name tags he gave us in the uh, press release. I didn't know he wanted that back. It was nice. Yeah. Good, good turnout. Yeah. Good turnout. Yeah. 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 We don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. The agenda. Okay. Let me I got the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, my toner was running out, so I couldn't print off the list. My printer doesn't work with my computer anymore. Really? The no. computer I have, I have a Mac, and the up, my upgrade doesn't match the one for work. Yeah. Uh, work, and it's, I'm scared. I mean, some people are big believers of apples. I am not a I apple learned from the beginning on one of them. So, yeah, I was one of the, I worked for. Um, I mean, some people have them because they don't want, they don't like the Bill Gates monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are another, another <laughs> problem is it's not one or two, but I was working for scientific instrument manufacturers as an architect. Oh, and I all and they, they used them so to design work and programs they came. I heard they are better for they, certain They things. really are, oh, yeah, especially for graphics. Yeah. yeah. Art and art and design. So we love that. Yeah. And so I got used to it. And, and you know, but I have. I have one. Well, I have I mean, Kate. Then it worked, but oh, I'm sure the computers in the archives, depending on where. Uh, uh, okay. One of them is on the same. They were supposed to bring really? them all to the same software. Where's your IT people, Justin? Well, um, yeah. I mean, UB, I would always kind of Howard. Howard was the IT person connected to the graduate school education. Yeah. So anything I want. I kind of tear in the corner. I thought it was someone who would pop in and say, here, do it this way. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's become it's more and more difficult. Oh, you do get a chance? No. Yeah, I do. It depends on the time. There were a couple of pieces. Well, you know, it's crazy. It's a tree bonds, too. So I had a call yep. forward and Howard oh, came okay. in and he goes, all you do is all He'll be running. I go, well, see, for you. I, I said, oh, I didn't know that. You are there. You are there. Okay. There is there. Anyway, I would have to find the last Oh, you. Congratulations. Thank you. Those are, these are yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hey. I said I don't need this. I'm vaccinated, but yeah. I wear it because I don't know whether yeah. other people are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the baseball game Thursday, and they pretty much removed out all the restrictions. Yeah. And yeah. Like, you don't have to show them. Yeah, that makes me a little weary. They're playing, uh, Toronto's playing Baltimore. Orioles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're an Orioles fan? Oh, I've been an Orioles fan yeah. for a million years. Hopefully, it will be as bad. Baltimore people are Yankee Ever. people. Right? Since I was a kid, I don't know why the O's for a long time. I'm an actual gentleman for the family in Chicago. Yeah. I was split between 
I asked him if he was interested in being on HPC, and he said he's waiting for the planning board. What? Yeah. Oh, come on. So, a call from you or an email from you explaining to him that we are actually like the planning board for historic properties. That is conversation with the last year. And maybe he forgot when he said last year when he spoke to you. He wanted to get on the planning board. Yeah, there is the there, 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 there is the seat. I haven't heard from Ron Chili. Apparently, no one has a seat. Yeah, well, the Yankees aren't going to be bad tomorrow. So, but I will. I'll reach out to them. Okay, and I'll bring you Susan Fenster. I know, me too. She's been an about a year, but I've never heard anything back about it. So she's going to send it again. It's a squirrely one. Because she's very interested. I mean, she's right there. Yeah, right there. She'd be home. So those two, I was thinking, because he wanted to sit in with us and tell her. He could do planning for her. He could do planning for her. He could do planning for her. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and I didn't want to get into it. With him, was it? Because I was talking about his kids, his partner, and everything else. So it's too I just sort of have been in the home. Just jam. You said we we fix and then you hear your new. And you say there's going to be a lot of things. I don't think it works since the last. Yeah. I I wish I was like to go back to the village. Yes, well, I just want to hear us. He's doing great. Well, he's been here to see the protest today. I think we'll be last year. Yeah. 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 Um, I will. Yeah. If not, you know, I mean, we can always have him read it after, yeah. before we nominate or something. And then, uh, I'll call the meeting to order 7.05 p.m. Okay. Welcome everybody to the June HPC meeting. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes from uh, last month's meeting, May 26th? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Any yes. changes, corrections, omissions? Yes. 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 moved or no. Chuck moved and I seconded. Mary, thank you. Yeah. Who's that? Oh, roll call. Yeah. Did you do roll call? No, I did yeah. not do roll call. Sorry. Roll. I, I'm sorry. I, I skipped the roll call. Deb. Okay. We have Miss Lother. Here. Miss Delaney. Here. Miss Hunt. Here. Mr. Akers. Here. Mr. Tamaro. Here. Mr. Bannon. Miss Palmer. Excuse. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Stone, Christy E2. Here. All right, thank you. Just a comment. I've been on this board for almost three years. I've never met a resource person, Mr. Barrett. Yes. That's right, last year, right? He was appointed. We created that position actually at the last reorg, which was September. Um, and Tom, uh, he, unfortunately, he wasn't, he was going to zoom in, but he, he, he's a village resident, but during COVID, he relocated temporarily down to like Derby, where his parents live, to take care of them because they're elderly. People mm -hmm. trying to keep an eye out. So once this kind of all resolves, he relocates back to Okay. I, I just never yeah. met him and I yeah. just seen him. We call his name every time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This yep. is the fandom member. <laughs> okay. okay. Can I ask a question? Hey. Yes. Um, when I was on the website today, my name still wasn't on the. I received your email. Yes, we need to correct that. It'll it'll all get updated in the next month. Anyway. 
Because I, I mean, I don't want someone to think I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> no, no so. nobody here has to. Oh, yeah. So an application, everybody here is still. You're not. None of none of you are even up for reappointment. They're not. Nobody's up for reappointment. So, so good. So it'll all get updated in the next month. Okay. 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 All right. Since you created position and resource members, mm -hmm. and that's not in our bylaws for part of HPC. Does the bylaws? Does the code have to be changed to allow that type of membership? Because right now we don't have resource memberships mm -hmm. part of HPC. Yeah, but they're not really, they're not a voting member of the committee. They're primarily volunteers who have an interest and who have maybe an expertise that you can call upon on, in a specific situation. So do you, do you have that for the planning board? And no. official members? Are they named by code? No. Okay. I'm just saying if they are, we should all be the same, but yeah. they aren't. Okay. Yeah. Um, good point. So, I mean, basically, I mean, we're, we we gave it a name, but they're basically just volunteers. I mean, like Sue Palmer wanted to continue on with the education part, so she's volunteering as part of the historic preservation effort. But we just gave her gave it a title as a resource officer that you could, you know, these are individuals who are interested and can be called upon if needed, if as needed. needed. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. Did Did you need us to speak up on any of that, Deb? Did, Yes, I got it all. Yep, but if you speak up, that's helpful. Okay. okay. I know, I don't know what it's like in this room compared to the other room. It's it's all right, and uh, okay, so we've uh, we've already um, reviewed the minutes and, and motion carried that motion. So we'll go on to new business. Uh, one, the certificate of appropriateness application still uh, has not been received. Tim Masters has not contacted me regarding that. So we will uh, table that to the next HPC meeting. Two new business, uh, begin a community education program. That is just something to carry on uh, to, to, to start with, maybe with Sue Palmer. Um, we did receive um, an invitation to preservation day at Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village on Saturday, August 7th. Um, so that's, uh, you know, part of the community education program. It'd be a good thing if anybody's interested. We would just need a couple of people um, to be there. Uh, it's 10 to 4 p.m. If anybody's interested, please let me know. I'm, are you doing? Um, I'm going to go. The Historical the Society? For the, or, well, no, for HPC. Are you going to represent both? Yeah, I'll do both. Okay, good. Good. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. But we should have more than just me. I, oh, I yeah. can check. I, I know oh, that's I right for us as well and a few other things. So let me check. I'm not okay. I'm interested too. Yeah, it'd okay. be nice to have a couple more. It's a, yeah, it's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was it? Uh, 10, 10, to 10 to 4. Okay. If you need a body, I'll be, I could go. Okay. okay, great. I thought I'd take some coloring books and oh, yeah. give some of those out and. I'll take some of our walking trip books and sell those. Yeah, Saturday, yeah. August 7th. Okay, well, you know, I mean, it sounds like you have enough people, but if you need more. Mm -hmm. um, they were thinking like two members at a time, maybe. Or, and if we broke it up and each did half, that would oh, be even easier. Yeah. What, what is it supposed to be, nine to four, nine to five? Uh, ten, ten, to four. Four. ten to four. Ten to four. Well, maybe um, half of us can go from ten to one, and the other mm -hmm. one's from one to one four. To four. Yeah, do you want to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll find out much more. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, because yeah, there's something else that I have tonight. It's not the same. Okay, thing. yeah, check your camera. Right. What? So I'll forward the schedule. I'll, do, I'll commit to three hours. Okay. One of time slots. Okay, I'll forward this email to everyone. Okay. Well, what is this technically called? Um, it is uh, Preservation Day at Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village. Uh, it's the former Amherst Museum. Yeah, I know where it is. Um, are we going to have a table there or something? Is this we will. Um, well, well, they ask us to bring a tent table and chairs. It'll be a card table. Uh, <laughs> so be a uh, one. Pull one of the folding ones out of the pavilion after that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want it, I mean, I don't know for sure if you wanted me to, I might be able to bring a laptop and run the, the, the photograph. The photograph. Yeah. Photographs on Main Street. Yeah. Just run the slideshow that keeps going. 
Let me see if we have access to yeah. outlets. Yeah. Outlet. Yeah. I don't know if there's any power. It's outside. Yeah. Yeah. It's outside. Yeah. I'm it's sure outside. it'll be outside. Yeah. 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 See if they got power. Yeah. They want to do it. I mean, I think they do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we do have a tent because it's August seventh, and yeah. if it's, it's going to be hot, and it's going to be hot, right? We'll yeah. want a tent, okay. and um, and just do a couple chairs. So okay, we'll set that up. Yeah, coordinate that. Yeah, we'll pull that through. EPW. Okay, very good. And I will uh, I'll I'll email and then I'll send her an email. Um, it's Carol Conwell. So I'll send her an email to commit to that as well. Okay. okay, perfect. Very good. And he, and there we begin our community education program. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with that as well, um, we have to start thinking about October, what we're going to do for October, who we're, what buildings that should be at the next meeting so that the plaques can be ordered, you know, ordered by them. We, we, we waited two months. I was going to say, like, by next week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we waited like two and a half months. Yeah. Um, I, so, really, I kind of think it's more effective once a year. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I was, twice a year is too much. too much. So I was going to offer one thing with regards to that too, is that um, the opportunity this year is available to do it twice a year, but budget wise for the mm -hmm. next year, we're actually catching up on last year. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we only had budget for one event a year. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we can't next year have budgets for two, but right now right. it would be mm -hmm. May, October, and then May, that we have for money for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the idea of just and putting it the first Saturday when the farmer's market opens and mm -hmm. there's people around. Mm -hmm. and okay, that's fine. Once a year is good. Yeah, um, yeah. that's fine. Um, okay. I think twice a year is ambitious, but it's hard to get the owners of some of these buildings. And True. it's yeah, we'll look at the planning we did last time. Yeah. 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 yeah, and we have a perfect example to follow that you set up. So that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. there you call me. Call me. <laughs> I'll, be uh, I'll be around. I'll be around. I know. Uh, then I just, uh, if we could get involved with something around that time, just to continue the education. I don't know. There's something to turn around in our. Just to continue being involved, we'll do August at the you know that event and. I don't know. I mean, there's any thought with the then. railway station too. Oh, that's right. So, you have the railway station. Yeah. So that would be so that's a good. Got some things going on this summer. Uh, okay, it, good. Um, it's archives month. Yeah. It's October the, yeah, archives uh, archives 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 So month. even if we just announce things like that, you know, and maybe even, you know, collaborate with somebody else on on some other programs that are mm -hmm. that are offered through the state, you know, maybe that would be. Just to get the name just out to get us to say about some there. of those things right. that we can do. And most everything that's offered is free of charge. Right. So, um, okay. Right. Okay. Well, let's plan on something like that. At, at least just to just to always have something that's public, that's going on with the public. We did a couple times a year. Well, how does anybody else feel about the plant ceremony being annual instead of twice a year? Well, I like the right. Yeah, like, I like yeah. I point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, I know. We well, we wanted the money. Yeah. Right now, we're spending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're spending yeah. the mean that's what not. we had. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, thinking of everything we put into it and and the um, all the uh, all the work that goes into that, I, I kind of agree that an annual um, event might be better. And then it's something to look forward to. Right. The weather's yeah. nice and yeah. Yeah, it becomes more special if it's more mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. So, okay, that's good. We'll go with that annual. Okay, and then archives month, and we're doing the Buffalo Niagara Heritage. I'll tell you what, I'll do. I'll just check with State Archives, see if they've got anything planned. Oh, I know they do. I've already been in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I've, I've got, got, I've got most well, the same old, same old for some of it, but it's a lot of things that they, you know, they start once and once in the day. All right, well, maybe the so next we meeting can, could bring yeah, like, a list of what's going on. See what's on. going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it okay. is local. You know, they rely right, on, right. on local municipalities, local, you know, libraries. They do promote it statewide. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, and I was just even thinking with maybe even if something at the library could go for some like New York Heritage, um, you know, things like um, New York historic newspapers. Oh, yeah. Know, that's a good idea. And just to promote that these are resources that they can use. Sure. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Something along those lines. Yeah. That's a very good idea. They, they do you know, have a microfiche reader over there, or a microphone reader, mm -hmm. and they do have mm -hmm. all the old camera keys over there. Oh, do they? Yeah. And I, think, I think they're actually up on, you know, on the, on the website. Yeah, yeah. I'll check some of the local things. Okay, great. You know what I think? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
tried to wrangle that towards the end of last summer, mm -hmm. but it proved challenging to sort of parse out. And, and I think doing it sort of um, uh, on the cheap, so to speak, may not be the best way to approach it. So like trying to do it in house may not be the right way to go. So my suggestion actually was going to be that we, um, we apply for a CLG grant to get the same, uh, well, to get the same design group that did the initial design was guidelines. It the yeah, yeah. The to, to give you like a supplement or an addendum or make recommendations for how to tweak it or something. I agree with that yeah. because I think it's true. Idea. I remember we were trying to wrangle it on the way. You get, you start to get, you start to go down going in circles. Yeah. yeah. There's so many money water. There's so many details to try to. Yeah. And yeah. try and separate the commercial from the residential and then try and make it work. I, I think we need professional. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. I mean, I think that the trouble is, and I, and this is where the, it's where the problem lies, right? Because the, the, the historic design guidelines, while they were authored sort of with this commercial bent in mind, because that's what we have, right? Mm -hmm. They are written without use as a criterion, right? Because the, the building is historic, not what was in it, and not how it was used, right? So there are historic homes on Main Street that have been businesses for decades, mm -hmm. right? And vice versa. So that what started to happen was like you start talking about brick. Mm -hmm. Well, like why would brick restoration on the house on Cayuga be different than brick restoration on a building on Main Street and stuff like that? So, like I think what the professional would be useful for would be rather than trying to go line by line, material by material, to just say like what do we, you know, let's parse this out, let's pull this out, let's pull this out. Would be more to, to talk in a general sense of like the priorities of the commission and the priorities of the preservation of a residential property so that then they could go back in and say okay with this philosophy in mind these are the things that we would you know shave off neglect whatever might be the case and then identify those things that stay in and those things that are irrelevant like landscape mm -hmm. lighting you know, in the right mm -hmm. um and, and then they could come back to you with a draft of, okay, you know, this is what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. They're contract out, but they get our input. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. So they, would come to you, they would come to you, they'd have an initial conversation yeah. or two, they'd go away, they'd come back with a draft. They'd say, this is how oh, we course. think this comes together. You give them some feedback. There's maybe one more iteration and it gets recommended. Do you have any room in your budget for a CLG grant to be written to do this? Yeah, we, I mean, the, we're in CFA right now, so now's the time to do it. Okay. Uh, and I'm not asking for a big number. I mean, I can no, call, it isn't going to be. I can call FBA and find out what kind of price we're talking about. I mean, you may not even need a grant. Okay. You know. I, know I, I went through, I think we should get it in the last one of the last right. ones. Yeah. And yeah. There, there's so many omissions in, yeah. in what they did before, including, you know, they, they, they really sort of ignored the north side of Main Street, with the exception of a few different streets and properties, you know, in terms of- Well, so of that's, a, that's a different thing. Oh, no, the reconnaissance no, no. survey? That's the, survey. Well, the reconnaissance survey. But no, I read the other other two and just, okay. you know, and just there were, I can remember some of it. Well, the, the, the intensives yeah. you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. the intensives are yeah. exactly that. They were focused yeah. surveys. So like the reconnaissance level is everything. Right. And then you pick one right. and say, okay, we're gonna focus on this, we focus on this. Yeah. So that would be a different grant. To no, do another they, intensive level. Yeah. Right. But I think they have to be, you know, aware of some of the things, you know, and how the how the village is, is set up again. You know, oh yeah. No, and yeah. Slim yeah. is very knowledgeable. Oh no, I know. I know. Yeah. Um the the other thing I would say too is that if you guys wanted to pursue another intensive level survey or you were, you know, eyeing another district kind of thing, like in Christine's neighborhood or, or Eileen's neighborhood or something like that, that um, the thing to do would be for that initiative to come from that neighborhood, not from this one. Um, 
because I agree. Right. Know. I mean, you know, hiring an outside profession also puts a level of independence on it too. And it's not coming from us, it's it's coming from people mm -hmm. who are professional that do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and so it kind of takes onus on us of trying to right you're right. accepting well that's what we had for yeah. south cuba we didn't do that ourselves no it was no. done by a profession yeah well i mean uh, the, i think you mean that yeah, the standards too got, but then the, the design yeah. standards right the, well the, the design standards the, well the design standards were something separate so yeah. like mm -hmm. we're talking about kind of multiple things mm -hmm. at the right. same time right? but like so from a survey point of view yes the surveys were all done by some professionals and they in fact i think you yeah. may have actually been number let me tell you Who's his own hero? Who's Latouche? Latouche? Oh, Lelouch. La Lelouch. La yeah. yeah. Right. Um, uh, you know, but I think that the issue there is that the nomination form for the district, the pursuit of that came uh, from a different place. It came from two residents, basically. Yes, it came from two residents, but it came the district. Yeah, right. But it right. also came from a, a developer threat as opposed to a mm -hmm. desire for preservation. So much as you know, so I think that 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 my my only point in getting into this, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but is to say that like the the most success that you will have is if the is if the neighborhood itself wants not, to do it. wants to. Do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I found that when I was doing our home um, resident, my neighbors were like, "What are you doing? That's so cool. How do we do that?" You know, can we, can I do it? Can I, and I have to explain it to them, you know, well, they need to do, get some research, you know, do some research, get some documentation. And there was great interest in it. So um, that's, that's a good thing. And then COVID really hit. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it got a little difficult for people to well, will you get, get to together. Touch with I'm going to reach out to, to Keaton and, and uh, Bernie and find out what the deal is with. Is know, Bernie your grandmother? Or tell her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Find out what the deal is with uh, the, the CLG grants and the CFA this year. If they're tied or if they're independent, um, and then we can certainly go after it. And in the meantime, I'll get a number from Pumatia so we know what we're looking at. Okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be a small number. It's not. Well, what are you thinking? Like five thousand? Yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking. Really yeah. getting a bunch of federal funds, and uh, the other day you're telling us bragging about how the millions of bragging. Yeah, we're going to get some. Um, there, there's, the there's, there's fingers crossed yeah. that you know we've heard you know we there is potential that we could have enough money to do like the bathroom at Glen Park and the bathroom at Garrison Park and you know there's like you know half a million in there or something in those okay. you know, good, good. but it's a yeah, it's there's no money in anybody's hand yet. fingers crossed toes crossed <laughs> yeah. crossed arms crossed <laughs> legs so so like every municipality the 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 yeah exactly there's something's coming okay. we just don't exactly know what all right so matt you're looking to a grant for a clg grant for the uh for design guideline for residential homes yes thank you then one thing when you, you mentioned design guideline um in the design standards because i was looking um at those i was just doing some homework on the interior um and we the code i think the code uh, references are off um the like the, the design, to, the current, to the current code it's because the current code was adopted updated. yeah, that, yeah. That's sort of swapping. yeah so we just need to correct that at some point that's, yeah. or just remove you know, make a hyperlink or something i mean uh, remove it from the just yeah reference it ref, without yeah referencing the number because we'll, we'll, you'd be perpetually chasing it. Right. If every time we make a change. Do we need to, you know, propose it? Do we need a motion for that? A motion for it? Or to we need a motion, motion for that? Or is that something that. To update, to clean, to to clean, clean up, up the, the, the design graphics. standards? Well, I think we have to find. You mean to write the new design standards? No, 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 no. No, 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 just, no. no the, uh, the, the design standards up. right now, yeah, um, it's, the codes referenced are the old codes. Okay. Right. Um, this code. Design standard, adopt new code, now design standard references wrong numbers. Right, they're not, and I found that out doing yeah. this because yeah. um, it referenced the 47-4 um, and I'm like, wow, is it like referencing the entire document? And then I started looking around, I'm like, no, they're all off because we rewrote it. Yeah, and I so it. Um, the good news is that design guidelines don't require public hearings to be modified. 
that's why the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess the if you wanted to do it formally, the motion from this board would be to recommend to the village sure. board that we get that caught up and corrected. And then we'll pick that up. Would that be part of it could be, but it doesn't have to be. We have the document. We could always just go through that and change the version. Okay. But will it change what we have designed it? It won't it change the current designs. It's in it's it's in the okay. current design. It should pull them up on my phone. It's just a it's just a bad pointer. Actually. Yeah. So um, so here's like a chore. chapter forty seven. Mm -hmm. And then it was very it was it was shorter. You know, it was and there wasn't as much in it. And now it's much longer and there's more um, reference numbers, reference numbers right. and it's broken down more, it's more specific on things. So the but when they wrote the design standard, it was the old chapter 47 and it references old numbers. So old chap, you know, old portion, old subsections and sections. So we need to get that updated because it's not accurate. To to correct. To the correct enumeration, the, to correct, right in the in the design standards, and uh, and I I would have never thought of it, but I started to get, you know, looking, and there it was. But it, it needs to be updated just so it's accurate because it's not it's it's not accurate. So I don't know if that's something that just we do need to motion make a motion for to get it done, or if we just uh, you know can it count on it getting done some at some point? Make a motion. It's it's just. I mean, it doesn't matter. It we'll get it done at some point, no matter what. But if you want to make a motion about it, then that's to uh, the motion that we um, correct the enumeration in the design standards to accurately reflect the current code. The current code. Period. I'll second that. You got that, Deb? And who seconded it? I'll second it. Jim Tamara. Yeah. And that was to update the code as per the new design standards to update the numeration. No, 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 no backwards. No. It's the other way around. Yeah. The other way around. Up, update. You said it. You said it. To, to accurately update the, update the numeration in the design, in the design standards, standards to reflect, to reflect the, the current code. Current code, right? Okay. Forty-seven. Okay. Um, Chris, did you this? Can be arguably a minor point, but it really is to me that is you have standards, you have guidelines. Guidelines you don't really have to follow. There are guidelines. Mm -hmm. A standard, but you have to follow it. Guideline, design guideline. We use the term for that document both as a guideline and as a standard. Now we have. I think we should separate that and say what we're talking about here is a design guidelines for residential but what we have is a is a standard design standard so for commercial for the commercial but their design guide know so in the last year that, that we i felt we've gotten sloppy that oh, it's a guideline it's a standard you know they're the same thing they're not and i think we should straighten that out because it's also i believe in the on the website, I think it's listed as a standard. It is listed as a standard. Yep. But other You're places correct. on on that's listed as a guideline. You know, I, we've got to clean up that language yeah. and clean up that in our thinking of you know mm -hmm. standards comes from the Department of Interior, mm -hmm. and our guidelines is based upon that. Well, I guess the 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 gist of it is there is no guideline. There is either a standard or there isn't. And we have a standard. That's it. We we've been using the the term guidelines. Well, you know, we need to strike that from our vocabulary. From vocabulary yeah. But yeah. It's, standards. Right. Okay. Yeah, because that is how it's written. Yep. That's this, that's we'll how it's standards. Standards. Yeah. And so they must be followed if they're yes. standards. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But Chip, I am still correct in that. Yeah. I mean, there. You know, I, I would not get too wrapped up in this semantic issue that they are design standards they're incorporated into the code um and the, one of the criteria for consideration by the hpc in issuing a certificate of appropriateness is consistency with the design standards it does not mean 
and the design standards themselves are not written in such a manner that that they're completely prescriptive. I mean, you have discretion to, they are meant, and that's why using the term guidelines doesn't particularly bother me because they are essentially, that's what they're there for. They're to, to provide guidance for the board in determining whether what somebody's proposing to do to their landmark property or their contributing structure in a historic district is consistent with the with the with the standards that are that are um, in the in the design standards, but that is by by necessity inherently somewhat subjective. It does say the standard. I mean, it's not. In other words, it's not like these standards don't provide like firm dimensional requirements. It's not like a it's not like a setback requirement in the zoning code that it's like you know you have to be ten feet from the property line. These, if you you know, as I'm sure you're all aware from looking at them, what they're really meant to do is to strive towards being uh, making changes that are consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards and that are consistent with the uh, period of significance of the individual landmark or whatever structure we're we're talking about, but there's obviously judgment call that, that you guys all are going to have to uh, make when determining whether any particular um, proposed alteration is consistent with those standards or not. So, I mean, they are standards, they're incorporated in here, you, but when you, when you say you have to follow them, again, it's not like, it's not like a, Again, to use the example of a uh, uh, a lot line variance or a setback uh, requirement, that if you don't meet it, you know somebody's got to go to the ZBA to get a relief from that. You guys have a lot of authority and a lot of discretion under this code and under those design standards to make judgments as to what is consistent with those standards and the and the integrity of the historical resource that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, thank you, Chip. Yeah, do we want, and do we want a design guideline for residential homes, or do we want a standard? Do we want the same language? I think it, we want. I think we have a standard, but we as a group have a little discretion. Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting is when you scan through the standards, certain mm -hmm. chapters have general guidelines. Right. I mean, that's the heading, mm -hmm. right? And I think that ultimately the goal here is is not not to reinvent the wheel, but rather to to focus the attention, right? So it doesn't it doesn't obviate the standard. It simply limits its focus. Right, and it states they're not regulatory and they're not part of the village code. It says they well, they, they 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 are now. I mean, so the, yeah. the the current design standards are expressly incorporated into Chapter Forty Seven now. So those are what you one of the things you apply when you're considering a certificate of appropriateness is whether or not what's being proposed is consistent with those standards. But again, they're design, I mean, whenever you're talking about design standards, that's where the distinction between guidelines and standards becomes very essentially, in my mind, a distinction without a difference. Because you're talking about design features, you're not talking about something that is susceptible to uh, enumeration or, you know, and, something that either you comply with or you don't. There's there's kind of a continuum, there's choices that can be made. So, but they, these are actual enforceable standards, but they're ones that give you a lot of discretion. And I, I, you can do whatever you want with respect to the residential, but I don't see any reason from my view why you would want to necessarily call them anything different or treat them any differently for a residential landmark. If you're gonna invest in having you know, some guidelines or standards and um, prepared. Uh, to me, exactly what you've done with the, with the existing ones would make sense. I think it would be more confusing if you called them something different and treated them differently if you're talking about a residential landmark versus a some other type of landmark. Hey, Chip, there's a, I think what, what Christine's focused on is there's a, there's a sentence in one of the early paragraphs, and I, I think it's meant to be there as a legal distinction. It says, however, 
these standards are not regulatory and are not part of the village code. Well, that's because when they were prepared, that was true. <laughs> but they have now been incorporated so when we're updating those that sentence should probably be taken out okay that sentence should be removed. right yeah and, and is it is it true to a degree that because these are design standards they don't require public hearings to be modified yes i think that that is true i'm trying to remember how we adopted them in the first place right i don't think i can't remember whether there was a public hearing when they were adopted initially probably not um i thought I, I, i've been using the term guideline because i believed that that there was a semantic difference from the perspective of maintaining that document is easier to accomplish because it doesn't require all the red tape associated yeah it's not a, it's not a local law it was not adopted as a local law but it That's, is incorporated by reference into a local law right right so the so the maintenance of the document can be done without having yep. to constantly yes. public hearings yes. for that. That's yes. okay good so we'll update that so we keep in the term guidelines. No, it's a standard. There's a standard. Standard. There's a standard. There's a standard. There's a standard. There are guidelines within the standard. There are guidelines. We use both. It's meant to be somewhat interchangeable. So then we'll do a standard for residential homes. I think or you're going to end up. I think you're going to end up with an amendment to this standard. Mm -hmm. See what they say. Yeah. See what. Yeah, I mean, it would seem if you if you if you get a grant to do this and you you know hired uh, Flynn Battaglia or somebody else, I, it would seem to me the most logical most logical approach would be to simply amend the existing ones to include a new chapter or whatever on you know on that, residential structures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I had always sort of envisioned it as a series of exceptions. Okay. okay, well, that's good thing we're getting professionals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is hard. That's why it wasn't done. Yeah, that's why it wasn't done. It had to be very, it had to be very. Yeah. Um, By the way, I'm sure it's on here somewhere, but I'm just, you know, I'm under the HPC tab of the village website, and there's lots of stuff here, but I don't actually see the design standards. No, they're right there it's in the middle. Just scroll yeah, down. It's in there. It's just above the local oh, landmark. Oh, there they are. Okay, I see them. Yep, sorry. Okay, got it. But then you click here and it takes you over to the code page. Yep. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to use. <laughs> it's not easier than it Oh, I see. But they're, okay. But then it's down at the bottom. Other resources. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, that works. Thanks, Chip. Thank you. Yep. And then we'll... So then we can go in and change, amend those, have mm -hmm. them amend the, mm -hmm. the yeah. references as well. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so that's that good. Oh, that was that. I got more out of number three than I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good job, guys. Yeah, All right. <laughs> um, and did we, we do we need a motion to do anything else? Like go after it or anything? No, we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, the correspondence. Uh, I think I sent everybody the anonymous letter that I received at my home. I don't know how many people got it. Um, in reference to let's see, where's that lovely anonymous letter? Excuse me, Christine. Yes. Hi. Um, you took you oh. have a, a motion and it was seconded. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we didn't, vote you didn't take it. We got a little. So, in the weeds there, so didn't we? Yeah. I call it in the weeds a bit. <laughs> All right. Can you read that motion back, please? So it was a motion by Ms. Delaney, seconded by Mr. Tomorrow, to recommend to the village board that the to update the numeration in the design standards in the code. I see Jim seconded it. Right. right. Okay. Then. Um, okay. All those in favor, take a vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bringing us back on the corral. Um, okay. Correspondence. I emailed everybody that 
the letter that I received and just actually I also sent it out to our liaison so he would be aware of it. Um, yeah, so that's that one's been hashed out a bit. Um, but it just wanted you to know that it's out there, what's out there and why the education and you know is important and not people not having misinformation. Did the village so get important. any response from the people who got the letter? Yes. Some. Some? Yeah. A couple of people. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we apparently had, it went to everybody who was named in there. So it, it would. No, it did not. It did not. Yes, it did. Did, did you get one, Mayor? I'm not. In, I'm is your, in the is your house number listed? Yes. Oh, yeah. and you didn't get one? I was surprised that not. not interesting. I mean, I think you get one. Weird. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it was very hmm. selective where these anonymous letters went. So uh, I don't know. How. Oh, the, you're talking about the anonymous letter. You got yeah. the letter from yeah. the village, though. Right? We got the you got the village letter. Oh, I got the village. Yeah, the okay. anonymous letter that went out. Yeah, you, oh, that's okay. why it sent it because it came the day of the meet, the six fourteen, the day of the meeting, and I wasn't sure if anybody was aware of it. I didn't want you to get sidetracked, yeah. side, blindsided, um, but that's why I sent it to you. I just got this anonymous letter in with you know a blank envelope with no return address. That's why I sent it to you, you know, yeah. um, and documented it. And it was just anonymous and very long. Yeah. And did you guys get to read it? I didn't. Oh, yeah. I emailed yeah. It. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, it was wildly inaccurate. And that's why I say the education component is so important. And, you know, we have to persevere, um, you know, it's, it's going to happen. There's going to be things out there like that, but we just have to. I kind of treat anonymous letters like you were. Yeah. There with the paper. The yeah. Out. Well, you know, I I don't say I, I, I to it. That yeah, I don't it it's, it's 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 kind of a cowardly move, in yeah. my opinion, to be. And I've never sent in my life an anonymous letter that I can think of. No, but um, but you know, it was out there, so I just wanted everybody to know yeah. that's out there. That. Yeah. It, you know, it's something that's when, why I say we have to be. When I read that, brought my mind that the last couple of years we've talked about residential, we were going to, you know, do the landmarking based on what was said in the 1997 survey mm -hmm. and gave the impression that only those houses would be considered. And I, that's, I don't think that's true. Right. Well, it's not. We no, hired a, a consultant yeah. when we decided we wanted to do the South Cayuga district. And if we ever did another district, we would certainly well, hire yeah, a consultant even, as well to update well, it. Yeah. Yeah. And wasn't it, I, I'm trying to think back. I think that originally, wasn't it that they the, they were hired after, you know, we, we sat around and were trying to figure out, you know, where historic landmarks, where are these, where are they? You know, so it wasn't that, that the committee or the commission actually chose them that was. That was right. an outside group, which right. was another misunderstanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to clear but, yeah. Yeah, right. but the impression that I got from what was said the last couple of years at meetings that that if you're not in that report, we won't consider you to be. <coughs> and I think that should be broken. But you know, that was a recommendation as a drive the reconnaissance. You drive by your car down the street and you right. mm -hmm. yeah. make comments yeah. and do nothing more than yeah. that. And the reality is that was done what almost 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. There's things now that are deemed historic by federal and state regulation yeah. that weren't historic then. Anything 50 so years or older. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not saying we're gonna do that, but it's changing all the time. These are guidelines. It was, a, it was, yeah, it was years, a good guideline at the time. 100% out of date. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, every before it clearly was yeah. written. You know, we had already been discussing and trying to figure out how to do, you know, I guess, okay, think about what we were, what we wanted to think of yeah. as historic and why we were calling it historic. Right. And in the meantime, things disappeared, like the ice house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> other things that yeah. they can't be blanking on right now because they're not here anymore. Yeah. Um, but that, so that was the point, you know. So yeah. and at the time it was a good, I thought, a great baseline. I mean, when I look at it, I think it's a great baseline for oh, yeah. where it's a starting point to start. Yeah. It's not the finish point, right. right? At all. So it's good to yeah. look at. Um, you know, things are fluid. I mean, we all yeah. every day 
Something in the town gets older, or something in the village, right? Including <laughs> us. <laughs> um, but that was the only reason I brought, I put that on there under correspondence because I did email it and it it was it was vetted. Um, thank you, Matt, for yeah, so taking care of that. Yeah, so and basically all of this comes up because of a simple wording revision to the existing code that has you know opened up a hornet's nest, but. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the, uh, what I'm going to be bringing back to the board on Monday oh, I will. for the third wants. public hearing for this code revision, which doesn't mandate three public hearings, but um, is to modify that language to open the aperture. So basically, any structure in the village, like residential, commercial, wall, pitching post, you know, little free library, you name it, that's 50 years or older, that someone is seeking a demolition permit for, will have a referral to this code commission. Rather than, you know, and then I, as I've been trying to, you know, sort of drive home is that like that reconnaissance level survey being that starting point, that touchstone, is very likely the first document that this commission is going to crack open and say, you know, is this was this even identified previously as being, you know, potential significant, yeah. significant in any way? And if the answer to that is no, I mean, you're already moving in a direction, right? So the the clause that's in the code that I proposed was to to make that initial sift, right? Mm -hmm. Say, okay, if it's already in the recon survey. That's what triggers the referral. Everything else is fair game. But apparently, people would prefer more government, not less. Mm -hmm. So yeah. despite the fact that they're actually saying that they don't want more government. So, um, so the suggestion will be instead to widen the aperture and just make it equal for everyone, regardless of property type. And if and when someone wishes to demolish something, they did a, a referral to this commission to decide whether or not it's your last opportunity to decide whether you wish to nominate that property. I mean, that's common sense to me. Yeah, I mean, they're not. So, I mean, unless you get a chance. Well, we've had that before. If you look at the house on the Walker property, they came to us to see if exactly. it was historic or not, and we deemed it a non historic structure. Exactly, which is a spectacular example, you know. And then, similarly, you know, on the flip side of that, is you know i've been using the wall on harrison as a good example right you know i i voted against landmarking that because i know that the current owners of that building of that house and that property love that wall mm -hmm. the previous homeowners love that wall my guess is the next homeowner who buys it is buying it because of that wall right so chances are better than average that simply by the nature of the person who owns that property that wall is going to be protected because it's unique but there is still that one person out there in 10,000 who might say, you know what, I'm buying this house and I'm tearing the whole thing down, right? That being on that list and now simply being a structure in the village, that gives you one last shot at nomination before it's gone for a while. It's a good thing. May I, can I ask you a question? So if this was in effect, say, a couple of years ago, the stone wall at Mill Street wouldn't have come down. Well, no, because they didn't, it, it wouldn't have been triggered because they didn't file for a demolition permit. Uh, okay. All right. However, what it does do is what was what was lacking at the time was the definition that that wall required a demolition permit. Okay. Will right. this change clarify? Yes, it what's does. Required. Yes. Right. And so then, so then that does not that does not stop you from backing your truck into the wall and saying, "Oopsie." But it it does at least give the village code enforcement oversight for the individual who tries to so the go around the edges. It kind of would. Kind of maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that I think the issue there was had it been encoded, it would have been more of a conversation because originally the intent was not to take that wall down. Right. You know, so there would have been more discussion about it and then, and our code enforcement officer would have been able to say, well, okay, but if things change and you do end up wanting to take that down, you know you have to file for a permit, right? 
Yeah. Well, now they've spent thousands of dollars to rebuild the stone wall <laughs> because the stone wall was there for a reason, right? It yeah. kept erosion yeah. from happening, yeah. and now they get these. They probably spent five thousand dollars on stones. Yes, I saw, I saw them. I saw them building it the other and day. And and I, well, you know. and Mary, I'm sitting here waiting for the, the lousy steps for the front of my house to fall apart. I know since last year. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And yeah, I'm seeing it go down the street this way. I know. I know. Matt, will we get the um, 45 days that I had requested? Yes. Yeah, so that what I what I've suggested as a revision is 45 days or the next schedule the HPC manage ever comes. And, and the reason I asked for that was because there are times it's like November where we historically mm -hmm. do not meet, mm -hmm. and I would not want anything to not for us not to be able to see it to for us to miss an, uh, you know something like that yeah, you Could may you? not know the answer to this but is it likely to pass suggestion business days business uh, days 45 it's 45 calendar. 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 okay it was, mm -hmm. but it was right. it was 30 and 30 it can i think it's put between the cracks yeah, 30 so 45 short. gives us time for whoever's on this commission to say, oh, we have to have a quick meeting or just a consensus or we have to do something. Right. Um, I couldn't get him to define that email would be um, an action, but um, I, you know, I to make take an action on it, you know, so that there's time, especially if it is one of those busy times of the year, like the holidays. So that put, gives us a little more time. Christine, um, yes. should you bring up the potential that they have to get the application to this committee 10 days 10 calendar days before we meet so we have time to because right now you can, you, it, oh it just came in and you bring it to us the day of our meeting and we have no idea right no time we to look been what's going on there. But the, the code as it's drafted requires the code enforcement officer to forward it to the hpc immediately Upon receipt. Upon receipt, but what if it's a day of a meeting? Well, you don't have, we to, don't hear have to hear it. We'll still have 30 days. 30 days. 45 days. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you basically, you say we just received this today. We haven't had a chance to review it. We're going to table this to the next meeting. That's your action. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, we're, we're still in action on it. 45 well, days. 45 days is just a, it's the, it's the window of opportunity wherein you have to at least respond to it. Right, got okay. it. So to, to initiate something, right? And um we'll table a hearing in the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially if it's received the day of. I mean that's that's the same mm -hmm. operation you have for the zoning board, the same operation you have for the planning board. You know, there's no reason why you have to react to something within hours of having received it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I've looked out for a few minutes and I just <laughs> Jeff, I, I think Jeff, a baby is being born, so I've looked out. Oh. Um but a um, uh, so it, so we have a um, we have the forty five days, and that's when it, the, a petition for demolition. So or an if application a, for demolition. If I, if I wanted to tear my house down, my house is over fifty years old. Mm -hmm. It's in the village. So I would come to the village for or the village village department. I'd file an application for demolition permit. Upon receipt of that application, the code enforcement is required to notify you that a demolition permit has been applied for. And from that moment, you have 45 days or the next scheduled, you know, HPC meeting to take that issue. Right. Okay. And act. Yeah. 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 The 45, but just a little more of an umbrella, bigger umbrella. Right. In case, yeah. right. you Depending know, on where it falls. It comes you know. November 30th, and we're not going to have a December meeting. Oh, oh, you know, then we've got time to reorganize and get something done or, we need. or pull together a special hearing right or special meeting you know right. okay. and, and, and chip from from your perspective this is um I mean, it's a code and it's legal to do this and, and well not yet it isn't well no but i mean the village board <laughs> has the authority to make this change and it's of course and yeah. stand up and yeah. stuff yeah it's not it's not an unusual provision the city okay. of buffalo is essentially the same thing that it's it's generated a unusual amount of angst um, yeah. but it, it, what it used to be and then what right. the revision was too so it was, it was so there subtle. it is it's one it, i highlighted it for everybody i mean i mean anything's just, possible but the, 
the big difference. Could sue the village right. to stop it, right? Right. So here's so here's the thing: the, the the primary difference between the way this clause is written and let's say the city of Buffalo operates is that the city of Buffalo has put the authority in the hands of the HPC to decide whether or not a demolition permit is can be accepted and be granted. Right, they're giving you the giving the HPC the permission to grant the permit. But what's weird is the way it's set up is that they also then have an escape clause wherein the commissioner of buildings, after 30 days from that decision, can reverse that decision and grant the permit. And all you got to do is just set your watch and wait for a month. Right? That is not the purpose of this provision. We are not asking you to make to be to discern whether or not the permit for demolition is appropriate or not. What we are simply at giving you is a referral, at which point it is your last chance to decide whether or not that is something you wished to nominate as a local landmark. Okay. Should you decide to nominate it, you would then, of course, have to complete that paperwork. And upon acceptance of that paperwork, schedule the public hearings, then we'd schedule the public hearings, and on and on the process goes. But they would put a hold on the demolition. puts the hold on the demolition. It doesn't right. it doesn't zero or one the situation. Right. It simply puts a hold on the permit so that we can have an adult conversation before it's gone forever, as opposed to we ran out and demoed it over the weekend, mm -hmm. and Mary was driving by and she had to chain herself to the bulldozer. <laughs> Right. She right. Yeah, she will bring you food and water. <laughs> All right. This is basically so. what happened to the, the wall on Mill Street. I didn't have the chain, but I was ready. <laughs> see what they're doing? See what they're doing. Just laying down like Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so, so. You should keep your eyes open when you're driving around. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, anything else under correspondence? Anybody? Mm -mm, no. Anybody? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Anybody? Nobody's communicating. <laughs> All right. Old business. A historic class plaque plaque presentation event uh, was very successful. I will say thank you so much. Like guys, for screen. Screen. All of you yeah, sitting so here. We, we got air time on channel four too. So we did. Yeah, we got yeah. airtime on channel four. Yeah, I actually um, saw it. I forgot. And somebody showed it to me at work. Yeah. yeah so it was uh, good. you know, it was appreciated. Um, elected officials in attendance were very appreciative. Uh, spoke to uh, Senator Rath and uh, Jackie Berger both at length. They're very, very interested in helping us if we need help with any preservation efforts we're making. So. Uh, they were great. Yeah, they were very. I think it's good receptive. to pull in other elected officials too, mm -hmm. and let them become aware of what we're attempting. Oh yeah, sure. here's a village ourselves. Yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, so it was really well received. And Howard was gracious. You know, he yeah. was he was really he really put up with us for yeah. <laughs> right in the middle of ice cream afternoon. But, I know I felt guilty. I bought ice cream before I left. I didn't really so I don't feel like you were it. suffering for it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> There's many people who were parked there and who did celebrations that day. Yeah, yeah. he put a lot of money into that. Yeah, yeah. he was telling me that fence in the back cost like eight thousand oh, dollars, yeah. and he put a fortune. Yeah, he's putting yeah. more yeah. money for that fence. I guess kids were like walking like a balance beam up on that, yeah. that wall. Yeah, yeah, he had mentioned yeah. that. So yeah, was good. That was good. Yeah, it was it was very good, and there was um mm -hmm. you know and you saw the bee and everything and things. So it was a great really inaugural nice. event, yeah. and I hope yeah. hope it continues. And oh, I mean, it really yeah. I would yeah. hope that it goes on and on and on and on because there's even if you're not presenting just something, um, you know, even if it were the photography thing by 2025, I would really like to yeah, um, I'd really like to see it like more as many photographs as possible and celebrate the 70th anniversary of those photographs. Sure. I mean, that's you know, a, that would be one of my, that was one of my things in, in the back of my the mind. The potential is to duplicate some of those and put them on the walls up here and mm -hmm. people walk down Main Street and keep the- Yeah, but you know what? People don't come in here anymore unless they don't yeah. pay their water bills. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. You know, they really don't. We used to have a lot more foot traffic. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, put them on the website or something. I think like maybe we should do like for the whole year before we get the deed around one of these that we're- Well, you know- uh, Yes, I was talking to the know, today about- 
historic stuff that they're doing. I think for old home days. You used to we should, that. You know yeah. who's a great resource for that, and uh, is Keaton because Keaton was really instrumental in getting and the press, for the, too, right? the press releases out, and he did. Yeah. Um, he Keaton did, did a great job. Stuff. He did the. Um, he I sent him the the uh, layout, for just the idea scripts, and he did the layout and made this. And you guys know that, but Keaton did this for us. <laughs> Keaton was really, he got all the, um, yeah, he got all the logistics and he got everything there for us so we could set it up. Uh, he was very helpful. So we do appreciate his help as well um, for that because I honestly, without the 55 plus emails I sent to Keaton, <laughs> um, probably it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to pull it off as successfully as we did. So. Um, so yeah, everybody was just just wonderful. I mean, it, was, it well, it did turn out good. Like I said, thank you to you guys. I've been, you know, really fortunate to have such a great group to work with. Um, number two under old business, begin the nomination of interior mural. Oh boy, fun! Wow, here we go. Um, I have a question about this. Yes, we don't even know what we're nominating because we haven't been able to see it up close. We haven't seen it up close, and that's true. I, mean, I don't know if it's canvas glued to the wall or if it's the material, right? Yeah. Because it's got it molding around it like a frame. I know it's not a picture that will come down, mm -hmm. but I, I don't even know what it is. Well, that's why I printed this out for every so that we could see. There's visuals, there's pictures of it. Okay. The mural. Um, can, I, can I ask a question? Uh, sure. Of Chip. Chip, so, so say we move ahead with trying to dedicate this in, internal painting, right? And we have a hearing and we know try to notify somebody from the bank, but nobody from the bank shows up. We, we could just go ahead, right? <laughs> and well, you, yeah, you can't make anybody show up and they don't have to show up in order for you to do what you're going to do. You just need to provide the notice. Right. Um, but of course, you know, as with anything else, your determination is essentially a recommendation to the village board, who then has to hold a public hearing and make the ultimate decision. Yeah, but my point is, if we have hearings and all this stuff and nobody shows up, then we can just keep moving ahead, right? They had their chance to, to show up and it's true. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, so Chip, since this is uh, the, the, the primary reason you're, you're listening this evening, um, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the first time the discussion of an interior landmark has come up, is there anything different about this or particularly Brought, let's say that we should be, you know, they should be very focused on or attentive to to make sure that the record is well. Clear. I mean, the most important thing, I mean, again, it is certainly potentially fraught because, to my knowledge, the village has never done this, and there's not many interior landmarks that I'm aware of, um, not only in the village, but generally. Um, you know, we, we, this was included in the, in, Chippo's 2014 model law, and we carried that over into it. Um, but, you know, sure, it, it's potentially, you know, because usually what you're regulating is exterior portions. But the important thing to remember here um, <clears throat> is there is a, I mean, an interior landmark can be landmarked, an interior can be landmarked only if it is, you know, it, it's historically significant and also that it's customarily open or accessible to the public um, or is an interior into which the public is customarily invited. I'm not really sure what the difference between those two things are, but um, so you wouldn't have the ability because it wouldn't meet that, you know, the criteria of the code. If, if it's in somebody's private home, for instance, you wouldn't have any authority to do that. Um, but if you're in a space that's customarily open to the public and it's historically significant, legally speaking, I don't see any prohibition on landmarking it. However, I do think, you know, I mean, that this is sort of uncharted territory for us. I mean, 
I could imagine a, a property owner may say that goes too far. You know, we're essentially relying on, we took this language right out of the state's model law. So I have not researched the issue as to whether or not anybody's ever challenged a interior landmarking. I can do that, um, but I haven't. Chip, I thought of a couple buildings that had murals on the inside and they were landmarked, but it was the building that was landmarked, which had a mural on the inside. Mm -hmm. Would it be better to modify our current uh, landmark, which the building is landmarked, to include the interior as part of that existing landmark rather than making them two separately? Yeah, I think that probably makes it. So if the building was already a landmark, Yes, yeah, that's the case here that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose that would probably make uh, more think, sense than trying to treat it as a separate landmark, but, I, but rather to amend, you know, to, to sort of. I, I've done a little bit of, of work on this because of the work that I do. Um, and there's, there, over the last several years, there's been a big discussion about the WPA murals and, you know, that they're fixed to buildings. Can they be removed? Um, even out at Great Cliff, there was a Scarafato oh, um, mural that was on the side of an old um, added uh, gar garage, and that was removed because it uh, because of who had actually painted it and worked with it, and it was reinstalled on the side of the Butler Library over at Buff State. Um, I work at Canisius. Um, we were. We are the headquarters for the Dickens Society, um, the International Dickens Society in, in uh, America. Uh, by virtue of the fact that there, there was, is, there was a, a huge study of Dickens there for a long time. And when the Newgate Prison was being restored um, many years ago, I can't remember the dates of these, um, the, the, someone purchased the gate from Newgate Prison, had it shipped, to his haberdashery downtown where it stood for many, many years. And when that was moved over to what was the Marine Midland Bank at the corner of Main and Court, and the haberdashery was inside that building, and that was being renovated and torn down, he ended up trying to figure out where to, to take it. And it was suggested that it be sent back by the Chamber of, uh, of Commerce of the City of London to London. This thing is oak huge oak and um, there was no way it could be shipped back inexpensively so when he realized it was we were the different societies headquarters it came to Canisius and it's under my care as the curator of special collections and it's in the hallway we're a private institution but we can you know people can come and go you can make an appointment to see it or you can come in when we're open to the public when <laughs> when the pandemic for academic institutions is finished so there, there, there are a lot of different instances where, you know, an item or um, statuary, you know, probably not that much at this end of the state, but um, throughout, you know, throughout New York State, especially in the Hudson Valley, it's, it's not unusual. And um, they actually have grants for restoration of things like this. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and if it's removable, that's the then thing they, we don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that was that was yeah. going to be my my question. I was going to offer a a scenario, Chip, and see what you think about this. So, for example, this this mural is is eligible because it's in a space that is customarily open or accessible to the public. However, I go and I buy the building, and I decide to convert it into apartments, and I want to put a mezzanine in the double high space, and make a couple of apartments in there. Those apartments are no longer open to the public. But the fact that, that my wall has a painting on it doesn't prohibit me from doing that interior renovation. So then what? What becomes of the mural? It's a question of, <clears throat> I mean, if, if the mural is landmark, you know, part of the landmark designation. The, it's, the question is whether whatever you're doing in there 
would, I mean, first of all, you're, the, 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 what you need a certificate appropriateness for is to alter, is to make an alteration or to remove or, you know, demolish. Well, not demolish, but the standard, but so. What if I built a wall? Pardon me? What if I just built a wall in front of it? Good I mean, question. Theoretically, theoretically, that that action, right? Uh, it's an interior renovation, which doesn't trigger anything with the exterior landmark. And I'm not asking to do anything to the mural except obscure it from view. So do I need a C of A to renovate that building if I wanted to put a wall in front of it? I would think so because it's no longer visible. But there's nothing. Well, so the question, and that's my, I guess, my point is that right. what, what, what makes it eligible is that it's customarily open and accessible to the public. But that's because it's currently a bank. If I change its use and it's no longer a use that's customarily accessible to the public, does the landmark status require it to be visible for the duration of its existence? Or removed. Well, I mean, I'm, obviously, obviously, if you if you want to remove it and preserve it and relocate it somewhere, else, I mean, that's a completely different conversation. I'm thinking about this from the sort of the brute force. I'm an out building owner. You don't get to tell me what to do with the inside of my building because it's the inside of my building. And OK, I don't want to do anything to the mural, but I don't want it anymore. And I'm just going to bury it. Right. It's still there. I haven't damaged it. I've just obscured it from view. Would I be prohibited from obscuring it from view? Prohibited from all term making it, but although you know, actually the way this is written, I don't know what actual protection is provided to interior landmarks because it still only says you need a certificate of appropriateness for exterior changes to a landmark. <laughs> that's model. That's the way the model law is written. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so it gets covered up, and 50 years later, somebody takes, takes the wall down, and you have well, they found that the mural the whole time. Like they did in Lafayette. Right. Yeah, Lafayette. Lafayette Hotel, they found gorgeous. that with ceilings. Absolutely right. gorgeous yeah. ceiling. Yeah. I know. For our and the wall. For the our wall. purposes, yeah. right now, it's accessible to public. So now, as of today, they closed the bank. Yeah, it's closed. But it's the a bank. It's right. A bank. Yeah, no, I mean, so theoretically, closed. yes. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that we can do it right now. Yeah, you're, there, there's nothing wrong with with with. You are perfectly within your right to make the nomination. Right. I'm I'm drawing out the nightmare scenario of the of what happens. What asks when? Right. What is the what is the purpose of the of the nomination? The landmark status and what does it get? You? Does it protect the actual mural? Right. And then secondary to that purpose. would be would be if I'm if I'm that building owner and I have a use that doesn't include this mural, right? And it's landmark, right? So then my recourse is to say I I'm coming to the, the HPC now to say I want to get rid of this thing. What am I supposed to do? With? Well, you know what? This reminds me of the scenario with the ice cream. We were told it would be preserved by the developer of the right date. Uh -huh. And a truck dumped a pile of bricks in the DPW yard and said, here's your ice house. Oh, that's what happened to it. Wow. Seriously. And, and, and this is what my fear is of this. This is 70 years old mm -hmm. and it depicts our, our community 200 years ago. And I think it's really important that we figure out how this preservation can happen. If they don't want it, that's fine. But it should be incumbent upon them to somehow be able to remove it in whole and give it to someone who will display it, whether it's the Winslow Historical Society, whether it's the town of Amherst, wherever. wherever. And so that's, I guess, my also point is that. An important artist. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah. invalidating the nomination. Yeah. I'm just, I'm saying I want to make sure that if and when this happens, how do we make this happen? You get what that you're protection. seeking yeah. and, and i and because this because this is uh, yeah i mean given given i think some untested legal issues that could become tested 
uh, if somebody were to, to have an interior of the property landmark. And also, frankly, the fact that the code as written doesn't really provide any mechanism to prevent anybody from making an alteration to an interior landmark. I, I do think if, if the concern is more about to make sure that whatever the future owner does to that building doesn't destroy that thing, um, you know, exploring options for acquiring it or having them donate it to the historical society or somebody else, you know, maybe a more fruitful way of going about this than, than testing an untested <laughs> Um, and legally fraught nomination of a inside of a building as a landmark. So, so possibly on the on the order of testing the untested, I guess the question is, and is again not something we've ever really done, but is there anything in the nomination process besides what is encoded in the, the law that would allow? Should the should the landmark status be granted that there's conditions placed on the protections of that particular item which extend beyond the caveats in the code. Like a condition on a variance. That should they put a condition on to what like, for instance, to say if you ever. You know don't use this property for where it's customarily open to the public, you shall, I'm not sure what you have in mind. I mean, yeah, so, what okay. sort of condition? Yeah, so let's, so pulling that thread for a second. Right now, this thing is visible through the windows on Cayuga, right? So, you know, presumably then that I'm thinking like, you know, the landmark status comes with it, the, the caveats that if it's ever going to be obscured from the public view, because of a change of use, or the current building owner wishes to permanently remove it, that then then triggers you know the conversation about the donation, the acquisition, the relocation. Kind of like the demo. It, yeah, kind of like the demo permit. That the point is, is that you can't just paint over it, knock it down, whatever, because it's part of your interior reno and no one paid attention. Kind of thing. Like, is there a way that could it? that certain specific caveats could be placed on that particular item above and beyond what would traditionally, the traditional protections that are incorporated in the code. Is that even legal? I am not, I mean, I don't think there's anything in the code. I mean, what, what, what you can do, you can nominate a, a structure or a building and it becomes a landmark. That means it's subject to, then if somebody wants to alter it, they need a certificate of appropriateness if it's exterior. Um, if they so want to demolish it, they need to establish a hardship. Um, there's no theory there's, for the mural. There's, there's you know, no, this just is not set up very well for dealing with this scenario. Right. Chip, Chip is, it, is it better to amend the historic designation of the building to include this or do a separate nomination just for the internal i don't think it matters I, in my mind it makes sense more to amend the thing because why would you want to have two separate landmarks on the same structure but i don't think it changes the legal analysis at all okay. Okay. i almost think there has to be something we can do legally so we don't end up with a scenario like the other house because gentlemen's agreements are great but not everybody's a gentleman and they're hard to enforce. And if, right, then there's no teacher. Well, it doesn't have to be a gentleman's agreement. I mean, you can, the village can enter into an agreement with them. Um, you have an agreement with. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, I think what, what Mary's saying is, is that it's easy to, to supply a condition and then find out on Monday that it was violated and then what's your recourse? Okay. Well, right, but the what's your recourse? I mean, just because you want something doesn't necessarily mean you can get it. You know, I, I think there's a serious question about whether or not. I think your concerns are right, Mary, but this is better than doing nothing. I mean, just, well, you know. I think too that the one thing that that probably is, is driving us in such a bizarre way is that you know, banks can close for over a year to, to the public. Right. 
and ordinarily there are at least at least two of us I think who, who regularly go in here and, and go into the bank and do business or you know um, and people coming and going it would make it easier to go in and say to one of the officers you know uh, we hear you're being sold blah 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 mural you know, instead we can't get a warm and, body. and we, right. we can't even get a warm body and I don't I don't know if that graph made any headway either but um, you know we're dealing with basically a very large corporation and um, you know just to even say is there a name we can send something to um, well as of today that bank is now perfectly permanently closed. Christ yeah yeah well Ed was going to check into it yeah, yeah. I think we need to do something because in terms of internal historic, this is the most valuable. I know. Isn't it gorgeous? Thing. It documents no in no other way the graphic history of the village. I know. And you know what? I meant to bring the, the two of you gave me mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the, the HBC the plaque event. Inside of there is that is that um, survey. It, it's, oh really? Yeah, that's it's that's the map. survey and pulled that map, pulls out the photos that he used for this painting, and I have to bring that. Yeah, 1854. Yeah, and so I, you know, oh, just yeah. getting I updated yeah. and just did some brief, you know, if we were going to do it, fill in the blank stuff. But if we're going to um, uh, just do an addendum to the existing. Um, I was wondering wanted... if that makes more sense because we've already got some precedent for that building. It's right. Just now and and I did reference the building, the historic, the, the, the building is already historic. Yeah, so already. maybe we just circle back to that. And... Is there a chip? Is there a mechanism other than just filling out a new nomination form? No, there, there's no there's no specified mechanism for like amending a you know, a, a, an existing landmark designation. So just, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. I'm just saying there's nothing in the code that specifies, you know, code doesn't anticipate that. But I think so. In other words, I think you just fill out a new designation. Okay. Well, I don't know where we are at this thing, but are we glad to move that we go ahead with? Filling out this um, submission and move ahead with designating this new term. We had the motion last year, to, or last meeting, to to write it from Mary. So this is where we are with it. And I mean, I got as far as I could with it, and then I wanted to get your input. What more do I need? Do and then um, or do we need? Do we need to put? Well, there's lots that needs to be, I think, the attachments. I mean, the yeah. problem is we can't see it. We can't even good a good legal description here because we don't know what it is. Right. You know, whether so, it's painted on plaster or, like I said, painted on yeah, canvas. I or mean, what? we don't have dimensions. We don't have any information. You know, what was the media that was used? What was the painted? Uh, right. You know, on yeah, the size and any of that. Uh, we just don't have it, and I can't find it in the place on the internet. Yeah, I know there, there was not a lot of, I couldn't find it either. All I found was what I provided yeah. tonight. But I, I searched him and searched him, and nothing. I, I looked to see if I could find anything in the BSA, but you know, the, the Charles Birchfield's papers are over at the Birchfield. Um, he also. He also lived in Bertrand may have lived in, in, in Ebenezer um, because there was a there was a art, artist group there and um, Charles Birchfield actually rented all of his homes from the family of a very good friend of mine and they each were given Birchfield paintings for wedding gifts so birth kids and stuff like that. But um, so there could be something in his, but I mean it's not gonna it, it would take it would take some research and right now they're close to researchers too you know uh but that's where the papers would be but with with the name um yeah with glover's name that's that gets treated and the fact that he you know he had he had retrospective shows at the, the outbreak that he mm -hmm. you know he he had other places around new york state he was a commercial artist he was an illustrator yeah. Yeah. of pulp fiction Huge pulp fiction oh, yeah. up at UV. Yeah, Do you remember when that came there? Yes. And um, and then I'm thinking, do we have 
Mr. Comical over the belt. Yeah. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. And, and did something like that with one of the adventurous, you know, um, the display services. Wow. So, yeah. Any idea how old Shack Jacob is? I, I don't know. Now, no, Jacob. 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 No, he's on the part. What? No. Well, there's several. Yeah, you know, I saw some. There is some, but a Jacob. Like a 69 year old. Yeah, yeah it was, I saw it that. Sounds good. I saw that. But it's just in 85, you know, that's oh, 40 was... years. He was 19, was... you know. I mean, um, I was picturing like a 85. Was... He, he could have been in his 30s. Yeah, you know. Been. And, yeah. and could have been. Been. there you go. That you know, in his 30s. Yeah, I figured somebody in their 30s. <laughs> so I, couldn't find not found he, I could not find anything. I couldn't find anything, I mean, from an artistic standpoint, that he was, you know, that he did restorative work anywhere else, you know, a restoration. I mean, it was just, he came out of nowhere, it seemed. I don't know if Chuck the Cheese was now. Hard to pinpoint his. And the only reason we know he did it is because he signed at the bottom. You know, there was no other way to identify that it was restored or you know, it was restored by. It. So I don't know, do we want to do, a, you know, start with this and, and, and just kind of fill in uh, the rest and, and brainstorm a little, or do we want to, you know, how do we? I think we should start the process with as much information we have. And if we say, oh, we don't have this and we don't have that. Well, by the time we get this or that, it may have already taken the whole thing down. Right. But, okay. and, you know, yeah, it's not a perfect application, but if we wait, we're going to have the same thing, Marianne, with the race. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, are you suggesting we we could complete this now? Yeah. I would, I would make a motion that we start the process of you know, completing this um, nomination. And then we move ahead with the nomination with the information. Okay. Well, um, under the name, is it sort I mean, what do we put here? Historic preservation, or does one person have to sign off on this and, and file, you know? That's where I drew, you know, I was I've left those blank because yeah. those were my questions. How I, I want to see the nomination form for the Bank of America. Yes. Okay. And where would that be? Yeah. I think that's our starting point. Deb, okay. Deb, how do we get a copy of the nomination form for the Bank of America building? From I, I believe either Judy, the administrator, or it's in the building department. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where um, all of the paperwork lives. Now, All right. I've um, been out for two years, so I don't know what they do. <laughs> well, can somebody excuses, contact excuses. Judy and, and ask her that if they can find a copy of that uh, nomination form and then submit copies to the Historic Preservation Commission? I'll do that. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, I'm not doing it. Oh, you're already doing it? Thank you, man. Oh, you're quite. I think there's one there. Oh, no, that's it. <laughs> nah, I don't do it all. Uh, yeah, that's a good start. Is that, you know, okay. Yeah, without that, I mean, we don't even know if the bank is listed here, right? What the story Maybe is. if we're really lucky, 2014 is still what we need. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if we're and lucky, all we this permission filled out some documentation about, about the mayor. Yeah. The mapping is. Mm. I don't know. We don't want to know until we see the yeah. submission. Okay, so we'll review that. Um, and then you want to wait until next month's meeting, which is the July 27th. Sure, so we'll move ahead with this. Is the bank building of the conflict? Yeah. <laughs> or do we, or do you want to move that meeting up? Which is, you know, an idea. Well, you're going to have a completely different uh, Matt, bunch of faces. Matt, Matt, next to me, so. if, if somebody wants to do internal work, they have to find the money for that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what Deb said that she she thought that it could either be you know if it's not here it might be at the building department. No no no. I, if, I they mean, wanna... if somebody does, oh. get that building 
and they say, oh, we're going to put a wall over this thing. Mm -hmm. They have to apply for a building permit, right? So we know it before they would do it. Wow. Building permit? Not necessarily. No. Okay. I think they, could go in, they could go in there with a spray painter and, and paint the whole thing white. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I think, I think we need they, to just have to close on the building. And that might yeah. take an hour or two. You know? Yeah, I, I don't think well, that's going to yeah. happen. Okay. I, I think it's we get the paperwork for the, yeah. the original Bank of America application and we sit here and do it next month. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds okay. good to me. Yeah. I would think, although I will say a building permit. Depending on what they're proposing to do, would potentially trigger a CAO. Yeah, that's not kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that they would leave the outside like it is. So, I mean, I think it would trigger a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you might get somebody who embraces the idea of that mural. Could be. Wouldn't that yeah. be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's our yeah. best. You know, bank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be our best. Our yeah, most best. Yeah. Yeah. A bank best. building but would that, that building, building was. <laughs> It's placed on the, the list anymore. because of its architecture. And so they're not going to tear out the windows so they put in a mezzanine floor in there and right. make it an apartment house. I mean, that would be stopped immediately. Right. Yeah. I think we're okay for a month. Right. Well, okay. I guess that's the only problem. We feel comfortable, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when is the next meeting going to be? It'll be July 27th. So, 27th. Yep, 27th. So, you requested that. Mm -hmm. So, we'll get copies of what I can. Mm -hmm. And then, if you actually, it's written in here, the part of the nomination, the, just a brief portion of it, this description is here. Which you can use. It's also in the uh, in here. This was a piece of. Um, yeah. It was one of the, yeah, the right. buildings. Okay, you know, I was going to ask you the extra. I do. So I should file it up with the purpose. Right. Yeah. So extras in case something. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then keep you know keep the paperwork on. Uh, Bertram, keep the you know blank whatever work work. I'm sorry, this one. Fill in the blank thing just to get an idea, you know. So, so you, and I did update it just so you all know. So it reflects everything that we can nominate because it was. Um, I looked at it and I was like, I don't know people have started cool. doing, but maybe I'll see what I can do about finding Jacob Powers. I did just call the phone number. Yeah, that's what I was going to is that what you did? Wait, 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 I found a phone number. I found a phone number for a Jacob Trotter. Really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I also. Go, man. Um, well, this is because this is the, the BSA listing form in Bridgeville too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I'll I'll call my friend and find out if she knows anything about because they they really kept track of a lot of. Them. I mean, they were they were really a close community. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. That could be the meeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe they hire. Do you plan to continue as our um, liaison? I am happy, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. So happy to hand the reins over to Christine if you prefer. That's no. I would like you to sit there. She doesn't need that kind of yeah. heat. <laughs> I think you're doing a fabulous job of uh, job. of working with HPC, and you know, um, yeah, just we'll take a lot of heat for us. So we appreciate that. We'll <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> Get your feet wet a little bit. You got that right. Hey, I mean, I got dropped into this one because Al was always traveling, and he was never available for the meeting, and there was a. Hey, our liaison never comes to our meetings, and so I walk in and like the first night it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're we're just going to continue then working on the um, the uh, nomination That's for the interior. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be uh, continued. Uh, any other? Oh, can I bring you to attention? Uh, Jim made a motion to yeah. start the process of nomination. What do you wish to do with it? Yeah, you gotta, that motion's already in motion. Yeah, we really don't one. need that. We're just gonna right there. You start. Not you withdraw it. Yeah, withdraw. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then once it's done, then we'll, we'll yeah, submit this we'll nomination. See, we'll see here. Yeah. Well, if that's everything. Um, I would like to say thank you. I've been honored to sit here with such a fabulous group of volunteers, intelligent, intel I mean, his, just knowledge beyond belief in this room for you know, the village history and, and for history in general. So uh, it was an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you. You too. You well, thanks. You miss you. Yeah, I'll miss you guys too. You can like, always come to our meetings. I know. I feel like I Dorothy that. right now. You know, I don't want to click my heels. You know. <laughs> but thank you. So thank the you next very much. meeting, when we get those applications, we should be prepared to work with that meeting. Yeah. So, uh, right. Uh, Fill in the rest of those blanks yeah. and get it, and just yeah. do it, and, and move it. Move it that meeting. Well, good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Hopefully, we'll have. Couple new members if they're at least one new member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, these are open meetings. I'll be happy to come on and sit in there. So. Why not? Look at this. Coming from Mary, I don't yeah. yeah. that. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, I uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Jim. Good night, everyone. Have a good evening. Anybody a um, hockey fan? A, uh... Yeah, we'll miss you. I will miss you guys. You stepped right.